Mass Slaughtering Civilians to Stop Terrorism Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix Remember, kids, Israel has to bomb hospitals and starve Gaza and incinerate children and shoot people waving white flags and assassinate doctors and journalists and commit daily massacres of civilians because if it doesn't do this, the region will be dominated by evil terrorists. Experts If Israel attacks Rafah, it will result in the mass slaughter of civilians. U.S. government. Relax, it'll be a limited attack. If it's real bad, we'll stop supporting them. Experts. Israel has attacked Rafah and is mass slaughtering civilians. U.S. government. Eh, what are you going to do? It's simply mind-blowing that Israel is routinely massacring civilians in front of the whole world for openly racist reasons, and the West is still chock-full of liberals who act like this thing is just too complicated for their widow minds to take a stand on, goo-goo-ga-ga. How do Israel apologists not understand that when they show up on posts, showing children ripped to shreds by Israeli bombs, explaining why what we're seeing is actually fine and perfectly justified, it makes their side look worse? No, no. Israel isn't a wildly belligerent rogue state which commits war crimes and mass atrocities in plain view of the whole world. What's actually happening is that the global international community and the entire United Nations harbors a secret hatred of Jews. Mommy, what was the Holocaust? It was a systematic extermination of Jewish people committed by the Nazis many years ago. Oh, what did we do about it? Well, not much at the time because our country didn't care, but we try to make up for it by helping Israel commit its own holocausts. It looks like they may be field testing more new weapons on human beings in Gaza. Palestinian journalist Bizan Oda says there was another tent massacre in Rafah that ripped people apart and, though it sounded like a bomb, she can't find the munition or blast site. She says they are using weapons that leave no clues but kills people. It's not a secret that new weapons systems are being tested in Gaza using humans as laboratory guinea pigs to demonstrate their effects. We already know they've been trial running new military robots and AI systems there since October. In a darkened hellscape that's closed off to the press and where it's open season on Palestinians, who knows what else these freaks are trying out in there. It's important to understand that just because Ukraine has been shoved out of the spotlight doesn't mean brinkmanship with Russia is getting any less dangerous. As Ukraine loses more and more territory and runs out of soldiers, we're actually seeing a dramatic rise in reckless escalations from NATO powers. France is preparing to put boots on the ground in an official open deployment to train troops in Ukraine and high-level empire managers like NATO Chief Jens Stoltenberg, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, U.S. House Speaker Mike Johnson, and U.K. Foreign Secretary David Cameron are aggressively pushing for NATO-supplied weapons to be used on Russian territory. All of these escalations push us closer to hot warfare between NATO and Russia. They are playing games with the lives of every organism on this planet over an unwinnable proxy war that they themselves provoked. The Western Empire must end. The thing about claiming Trump would be worse on Gaza is that you don't even know that's true. It's a completely baseless and unfalsifiable assertion. Biden's adamant refusal to put up any resistance at all to Israeli insanity is such a drastic deviation from the norm for U.S. presidents that it's entirely possible replacing him with almost anyone would be an improvement. Of course, it's possible Trump would be worse on Gaza. And it's possible he'd be exactly the same. It's also possible he'd occasionally tap the brakes a bit in ways Biden has not done, like the way he resisted his cabinet's pressure to bomb Iran after they shot down a U.S. drone. There's no way to know, since both Biden and Trump constantly lie about what their actual positions are. That's just the kind of uncertainty you get in the hub of a globe-spanning empire that has been subjugated by the will of plutocrats and secretive government agencies, where the will of the electorate has been nullified to having almost zero impact on foreign policy. 
Obviously, Trump is a warmongering swamp monster just like Biden, and will absolutely have a significant body count if re-elected just like he did the first time around. I'm just pointing out that liberal claims that he'd be worse on Gaza are based entirely on the imaginations of those making the assertion. Maya Angelou said that when someone shows you who they are, believe them. I would add that this also applies to government and military powers. 